Hello together. Um, we will have today our second um, assembler lesson. Um, well, since the last assembler lesson was uh, really very technical, um, but also of course interesting, um, I decided not to. It was very interesting. Anyway, I decided now not to continue to um, to go um, step by step over each um, command. Instead, we will now continue by writing a small program. We will write this uh, little snake here. And um, by doing this, we will learn the additional commands that we need. Um, I think this is uh, much more fun. So as I have explained the last time, we will write the assembler in a text editor and then hand it over to the um, to the assembler for uh, creating the final hex file. Um, this is also what I have explained in the last uh, lesson. So you need this standard header to get this first two um, basic commands so that the rest of the assembler program is then started in the right way. We say here that we want to have it for the com for the processor of the uh, Commodore 65. Um, this is the natural place where uh, basic programs are starting. So this is how these first lines are coming to the right position and then are able to start the assembler program. And here our assembler program starts then at the flag or at the label start. Then this is also something, maybe I, 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 I also paste this into the text um, uh, box of the video um, that you just need to do at the beginning. Um, it maps the memory to the right areas. So this is an, a good area for writing own programs where you have then access to the IO region and also um, some um, graphical planes are also mapped to the right position. So this is something we will use for now for the next programs all the time. Um, the, uh, the, if you want to have a detailed explanation about this, uh, please have a look at lesson eight where we made the mapping thing and the bank thing. Um, and then now here we can start with our program. So, and the first thing that we want to do is, um, of course, uh, we want to control our snake with the joystick. So what you see here is we are loading uh, into the accumulator from this memory position. And as you have seen in the lesson, I think in nine, so peaks and pokes, um, this memory cell is very special. I mean, it is only this memory cell if you have that mapping, but then it's exactly like we have seen in the peaks and pokes in basic, um, that this is um, uh, uh, this memory um, area or this memory cell is changed if the memory, if the joystick is uh, moved into different directions. The next thing that we then do is um, we do this um, exclusive or so you can have um, functions, uh, logical functions on your accumulator, like an AND, an exclusive OR, what we are doing here, or an, um, an OR, a normal OR, not exclusive in that case. And then, for example, you can hand over here, in this case, a constant, but you also could do an, uh, one of those operations where the second parameter is coming from the memory area. And in this case, we are doing exclusive or with a full set. So here in this uh, constant, every um, bit is set to one, which completely inverts just the, the, the memory or the, 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 the value we have gotten here, which makes it just easier to uh, handle this. And then um, we are uh, checking if this 
um, if this value that we got from here, if this is um, equal to zero. Ah, and before we continue here, uh, just let me explain you something about uh, some additional memory areas inside the processor. Because what I've told you the last time was the truth. It was just not everything. So in fact, there is uh, some more um, places, let's say, in the, in the processor. So we have this program counter and this um, accumulator and then this three additional smaller accumulators or memory areas where the processor can store something. But another very important thing is that there is also a state register where you have um, uh, each bit uh, with a special meaning. Um, so you have here one bit is the, the called the negative bit and then you have another bit which is called here the second one or the, the more, second highest one uh, the overflow bit then you have an extended bit this is new this uh, was not there at the uh, Commodore 65 you have the break bit and decimal bit an interrupt bit and zero bit and an carry flag they are always flags so negative flag overflow flag and so on and um, the interesting thing about this is that if you are doing certain operations like for example simply loading um, something into the accumulator or doing an AND operation or an, an addition or a subtraction um, uh, in, in addition to, to, to getting the result in the accumulator, also some of those flags might be changed. This is different from operation to operation. And if you are really working with this, you also sometimes have to look up um, in the manual, for example, of the compiler, um, which flags are affected and which not. I also do not know it for every uh, combination by heart, so I also have to look it up. But for example, if you just load um, an, 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 a value into the accumulator, if this value was zero, then the zero flag is set. And also for, for much other operations, whenever there is the result zero, then usually the zero flag is set. And the interesting thing is that in your program, you then can have additional commands to check for this flex. So you can check for the negative flag and you can check either if the negative flag is set and then based on this, jump to another position in, the, in, the, uh, in your code or if it's not set. And the same is true then for the overflow flag which is set if if you do um, for example an addition and the result is bigger than uh, the accumulator could hold or if it is not set and the zero flag that is always set if a result is zero or not and it's also interesting it's also set if you do a compare command and the the, the comparison, the result of the comparison was that it is equal, um, then uh, the, the zero flag also is set. So this is also a possibility to compare to if something was equal. And the carry flag is set if in an um, uh, operation and carry was, was taken. And um, based on those uh, flags, you can make checks and then jump to another location. So this is how we would realize something if something is smaller than, then jump to there, or if something is equal, then do this and that. Okay, so we are back here. So as I said, um, we are loading the, 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 the values from the joystick into the accumulator. We are inverting it by this operation and then so now here we have one of those commands checking for one of the status flags in this case for the zero flag and we say just um, if 
the result here or of the of this operation is um, is zero, then we are jumping over the over a part of the control because in that case the joystick was not pressed at all in any direction. Um, so and then what you see here is new. So we are working here now with a kind of variable. So or with a with something that was defined that we can define to make our life easier uh, in the compiler. So this is not assembler. This will also be replaced uh, during the assembling process, but it just helps to make um, the program more uh, uh, more maintainable and more understandable. So what I added here at the beginning. Um, of this uh, program is um, a definition of this um, alias word um, direction which is in reality just a memory area um, and this is what I use to store the direction in which the snake is moving. So we can use this now and continue with the program. So and what we are doing here is just the following. So if the joystick was not pressed in any direction. We are just jumping over this command which would store the, the, the direction in which the joystick was pressed again in the direction. So we are jumping over this and instead we are, are, we, we are loading the direction. So this means we are just working in this loop. We are working with the direction in which the joystick was pressed the last time. And now we are doing a compare. So the direction is still in the accumulator and we are now comparing it with one, which would mean that the joystick is pressed, um, I think down. So, and now we have here again, a comparison. It's the, uh, let me scroll this a little bit down. It's the opposite comparison to the comparison you, we had here. So in this case, we are checking if it is not equal. So if the zero flag was not set, but which is also, um, which also means that the result of this comparison was not equal. So the direction was not um, one, meaning the joystick to be pressed down. In this case, we are jumping over that command. And here you see again a variable I have used. So let's jump to the variable declarations. So here you see the additional variables I have defined. We need an X value to store the X position of the head and a Y value to store the Y position of the head. And now we can work with this. So if it was pressed down, then we would um, decrease, increase the, oh, so this is then up. So let's note this, joystick up. And then we would decrease the Y position of the head. If not, we are jumping just over this and we are comparing um instead with the um, with the two which means joystick down and again we make the check so if it um, if it was not equal we are jumping over that command and then checking checking for the other two directions but if we would then increase, um, I'm not sure if I already have um, introduced these two commands. So with deck, you can just decrease a, mem an, a value in a memory area. Um, and with ink, you increase the value in a memory area. There's also the possibility Maybe I should show this. 
Um, there is also the command in x, in y, and in z, which is increasing, and also the same is for dec. So then there is a, for example, dex, um, where you can increase or decrease directly the commands, uh, the, the, the values of the x, y, and z register. Um, yeah, it's really annoying that it's not really working for, or it's not existing for the accumulator. So if you want increase or decrease the accumulator, you either have to really to add one. So you can with add, you can add something to the add accumulator. So you, could, you would have really to add one. Or you could copy with TAX, you are copying the accumulator into the X register, then you would increase the X register and then you would copy um, the X register back into the accumulator. So this was uh, always a little bit annoying when programming for the Commodore 64 and for the Commodore 65. This is still the same. So I have now here the full control of the of the um, for the joystick. So we have here the joystick down, and then we have here the joystick um, left and the joystick right, or the other way around. I uh, confuse left and right all the time in the real life. So why should it not also be? here and you see then um, for the second the logic is exactly the same we are just going for different values here and um, we are increasing and decreasing then the other variable so so what we have now done is that we have based on the on the on the joystick uh, on the joystick's input we have moved the head of the snake one in each direction um, but maybe this was uh, not right because um, maybe we have moved the head outside of the screen. Hello! <laughs> uh, during cutting the video I've realized that it will be much much too long so I have to cut this down to two or three lessons. Um, so you have seen now how a joystick control in assembler in general is done and we will jump in the next in the next lesson where you then will see how we avoid that we move the snake or that we would move the snake outside of the screen so see you in the next lesson <laughs>